Hey, this is Mike, and today I'm going to share some information with you about ScienceLogic SL1 maintenance modes. Anybody who's worked with an NMS has had to determine how you're supposed to set up a maintenance mode on a device, or uh, other platforms call it a suppression, which has a different meaning in ScienceLogic SL1. But basically, if you know there's going to be maintenance performed on a device and you don't want to get a whole bunch of alerts and tickets, you need to have a way to be able to shut that off. And ScienceLogic SL1 has several ways to do that. So from the classic interface, navigate to registry and the default that will pop up is devices, device manager. From here, you can select as many or as few as you'd like, filtering down or leaving it wide open as you prefer. And then from the drop down menu, you can select an action to either schedule maintenance or change maintenance mode here. Now, those are three very, very different types of maintenance mode. And I wanna talk about each one. So if you go to schedule maintenance and press go, it'll pop up a schedule that you can set for all of the devices that you've selected. You can change the visibility of this maintenance schedule if you have a multi-tenanted environment and you want to make sure that your customers can see that where other customers cannot, or if you want to keep it just for your own organization, you can set it to private or world, which I typically don't recommend. You can set a start time, which should optimally be some date in the future. In past versions of Science Logic SL1, you could set a date in the past and it would go into maintenance mode immediately. That's been hit or miss in recent versions, so I always recommend that the start time be some point in the future from when you save this, and then set an end time as well. Make sure you just set the time zone because that's going to be very, very important. You can set a recurrence if you have, say, a weekly or monthly patching cycle that you know you're going to have your servers down for a period of time and you don't want to get an alert, you can set it for that. And something else that's very, very important, especially if you're doing patching, is you probably want to enable collection polling. By default, all maintenance modes will have disabled polling, which means if you have a problem during your patching, then ScienceLogic SL1 is not watching and it can't help you with what might have gone wrong. So you usually are going to want to enable collection polling. Once you have that maintenance schedule set up, you go ahead and click save and it will be ready to fire at the time that you have selected and end at the time you've chosen. There are certain use cases where, say, a network engineer reaches out and says, we're doing this change now, it's an emergency change, we need to make some updates, please suppress any events that you get from the device. So you'll select your devices here again, go to the drop down menu, and you can change into maintenance mode immediately. Now, these are indefinite maintenance modes, meaning once you set them, you have to manually unset them or the device will remain in maintenance mode and you will not get any alerts for that device, which is not optimal. You usually don't want to keep them in maintenance forever. So use this with caution, but it is a very valuable and important tool. Now here you'll see a couple of options, enabled with collection, enabled without collection, and disabled. If you want to make sure that you still have eyes on the device during the maintenance period, you just don't want any alerts to pop up, choose enabled with collection, which is typically what I default to. And you press go, and you'll see the collection state has changed from active to user initiated maintenance. That science logic code for we're still collecting, but the device won't throw off any events. You also have the option to enable without collection. Here, they actually will call this system disabled slash user initiated maintenance, which can be misleading if you're not familiar with the platform. What this means is that you have a device that will not be throwing any events. However, the collector is also not collecting from the device any longer. And before I mentioned you have to manually take it out of maintenance mode, here's how you do that. You go to maintenance mode disabled and press go which seems a little scary because you don't necessarily want to disable your device, but that's what they do to tell you how to turn the maintenance mode off. If you want to actually disable the collection on any given device, you change the collection state from active to disabled. There are differing opinions on this. 
some folks like to use disabled to indicate that it's a device no longer in the system. I prefer, if I need to keep the historical information on that device, to put it into a virtual collection unit group, which allows us to keep the information, no longer be billed for it, but not litter the console with disabled devices. And in the case of a dynamically generated component, that can get pretty messy pretty quickly. So usually you do not want to put a device into a disabled state. It's better to remove it from the system or move it into a virtual collection unit group. Some folks may disagree and prefer to utilize disabled. That's completely up to you. Uh, there are pros and cons to each approach. Thank you.